Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here with a busy Broncos news and rumors show for you guys on a Monday afternoon. So here's what we got coming up on today's show. Four trade ideas from Mile High Huddle we're going to unpack and look at. Plus, we have some rookies to watch for. Really the stars of the show in terms of the rookie class so far at training camp. Speaking of training camp, we're going to touch on the latest injury news stemming from that, including Ronald Darby and Kwan Williams and more. But make sure you like today's video and subscribe to the channel to help support us here. Now, let's jump into our first trade targets um, coming from Mile High Huddle. So they wrote a nice article, I'm inviting you all to go check it out for more of their information. But they identified four players who could help this Broncos defense via trade. Deron Payne, definitely the biggest and most noteworthy name of the bunch. They also tossed in uh, Kimiko, or Kimiko Toure, Jerry Tillery, and Ben Banigou. So we're going to really focus on two of these guys here, Payne and Tillery. Let's start with Deron Payne because I think if a trade were to happen, it's probably going to be on the defensive line if they want to improve the run-stopping ability of this group. Now, Payne is entering the final year of his rookie contract, and a couple months ago, remember, he did a half-ass, not really a holdout, but he made it known, I want an extension. And the Washington Commanders went, we're probably not going to do that. We actually drafted your replacement in the second round this year because we would rather not spend a lot of money on the interior defensive line. Now, the third defensive tackle job is ab absolutely up for grabs. I mean, when you look at this depth chart here, we know the two Joneses are going to start. DJ Jones was signed to help this run-stopping ability. Draymond Jones adds a good, uh, I'll say he adds some good extra pass-rushing depth, but he's not necessarily known for his run-stopping abilities. Now, it's the other defensive end, five-technique defensive tackle spot that is very much open for grabs between Deshaun Williams, McTelvin Najim, or the rookie out of Iowa State, EU. Now, Deron Payne, I don't want to say his name. Wazuruki. Wazuruki. Okay, I got it there. Uh, Deron Payne, though. When you look at his stats and what he's done so far in the NFL, first-round pick out of Alabama that's had a very good start to his career. The issue is when you're a first-round pick, you have that fifth-year option, you have to be more than just a very good start. you got to be a little bit better if the team believes you are a long-term plan. And he's going to be a good starter wherever he is in the NFL. The Washington Commanders are just a notoriously poor run organization. So I wouldn't be shocked if they wanted to go cheap and let him walk out the door. Now, should the Broncos trade for pain? That was one of Mile High Huddle's four trade targets. I'll expand on my thought in just a moment, but give me a Y for yes or an N for no. And while you're down there in the comments section, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're trying to reach 9,000 subscribers by week one. We got 550 -ish, 552 to go, so make sure to hit that sub button. If you're looking for a Broncos YouTube channel for the entire 2022 season, this is the channel for you. Now, let's move on to Jerry Tillery because it kind of ties in with pain a little bit of this idea of let's go improve the run defense, which I don't think George Payton is going to do. I don't think he's going to be interested in unloading one of his five picks in the 2023 draft class for run stoppers. It's just in this day and age in the NFL, you just don't see that all that often, right? You don't tend to see GMs go out there and put in tons of resources unless it's like, top tier like Aaron Donalds of the world Tillery he ain't that first round pick back in 2019 that's been a bit disappointing here are his 2021 PFF grades and stats they're not the prettiest the guy ranked 94th out of 108 qualifying interior defensive linemen according to pro football focus his run grade was worse than his pass grade if you're making a trade you've already got plenty of edge rushers and pass rushers right Chubb, Gregory, Browning, you drafted Nick Benito. It doesn't make a ton of sense to me. If you want to go improve this defense, you want to go add more pass rushers? Like, don't you think you should look at the other side of the ball, even if it's not the more important side of a defense? Help the run defense, because this run defense last year just did not have a lot of teeth to it. And sure, you played Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes and Derek Carr even, 
six times a year, you got to be able to slow down what they're going to do through the air. But they've also got a decent run game. So you might want to look at that side of the football as well. Now, next up, what about Ronald Darby's injury? You may have seen this if you're on Twitter or whatnot. He went down at the end of training camp. Not the best uh, reassuring sight to see here. He was shaken up after diving for a football. Now he did get up and he walked off under his own power, which was good to see. The only thing that makes this a little bit more newsworthy is that Darby has had, unfortunately, a knack for getting injured. I mean, you look at his so far seven-year NFL career, he's only played a full season once back in 2020. Probably a big reason why Peyton signed him because he saw, okay, Hopefully, you can stay healthy. It hasn't always been the case. I mean, with the Eagles, eight games, nine games, 11 games. Last year for the Broncos, if you remember, hurt his hammy early in the season, end of the year on, on IR with a shoulder injury. Hopefully, Ronald Darby's okay, of course. Now, he did get up and leave under his own power, so that's a good, promising sight. Did not appear to be overly serious, but you just don't want to see more injuries after Tim Patrick because it just gives... Everyone a bit of a scare, and their heart skips a beat. Now, next up on the show, we're going to be looking at the best rookies so far at training camp to watch for, meaning the guys that have really jumped off the page have made a bit of a name for themselves. We're going to keep you guys informed on who the new guys in Mile High are. But first, if you are wanting a shout-out here on a show, really simple stuff. Just subscribe, comment, let's ride. Broncos country, let's ride. Did you see the guy, Did you guys see the video on Twitter? of all the receivers mocking or recreating Russell Wilson's Let's Ride. Judy, I thought Hamler had the best one. You guys should go check it out there, but drop a simple Let's Ride once you subscribe. Two rookies have really caught my eye, in the eye of many people following the Broncos, so far at training camp. Montreal Washington, by far. It's Montreal Washington, and then 50 feet of crap, right? I mean, that, that I mean that's my... Moneyball reference, but that just goes to show how great he is. And then Damari Mathis, the rookie corner out of Pitt. Now, let's look at Washington a little closer. Fifth round pick this past draft out of Samford University. Not Stanford, Samford in Birmingham, Alabama. And he has proven that he is more than just a return specialist. He is not just going to be out on the field for punt and kick returns. He's really making a name for himself in the wide receiver room which is by far blowing everyone's expectations out because everyone thought, okay, the Broncos are addressing a need at special teams, drafting a little bit of a spark right there. If he can help out in other spots, good, but not expect it. Washington's going, hold my beer. I'm going to run very fast, and I'm going to help on the wide receiver, okay? Now, Zach Stevens, who covers the Broncos, does a great job of doing so, who's at training camp tweeting out Dwayne Stukes, that's the um, special teams coordinator said Montreal Washington's ability to make plays on offense is only helping him on special teams and giving him confidence. So you got the special teams coordinator talking about the rookie saying, yeah, he's not only doing great on my side of the football in my sphere, but he's killing it on offense right now. Okay. The Broncos own team reporter tweeting out Eric Delilah saying Montreal Washington. Here we can get that on screen. Um, Montreal Washington hauls in a likely red zone touchdown from Russ. He's been arguably the biggest surprise of camp. We could open up this entire conversation beyond training camp. Just in, or excuse me, beyond the rookie class at training camp. That's how special he has been so far. Now, Fanatics has a special deal for all of you guys watching where you can get not one, but two Broncos t-shirts, combo pack, 40% off. When you go to chatsports.com slash Broncos Combo, which that link, by the way, is in the comments and the description of today's show, you can be repping some awesome Broncos gear on sale with the season right around the corner. Make sure you got yourself some nice Broncos swag when you go to chatsports.com slash Broncos Combo. Before we look at Damari Mathis, I just wanted to share this awesome picture of Montreal, Washington, I mean, that's not what you thought you were going to get when you drafted him in the fifth round, right? Peyton looked at the board and went, okay, I can get in a, I can get a contributor on special teams. Tyree Cleveland, not looking like that's going to be in his cards for the future. Not really all that confident on Kendall Hinton. Why don't we go get this guy out of Samford who 
only known for playing Alabama every four years and getting their ass kicked, but he gets to make one good play in the first quarter until Bama puts up 55 unanswered. Now, here is an interesting idea. Could he be the ultimate sleeper? This happens to me every training camp. Every single training camp, I get way too high on a rookie or a bit of an unknown, and then the season starts, and all of a sudden it's, I mean, wait till the preseason, guys. When Montreal Washington makes an amazing play in the first preseason game against the Cowboys this Saturday, you better believe I'm going to be talking about, should the Broncos give Montreal Washington more snaps than Jerry Judy? Like, that's how drunk I'm going to get on this Kool-Aid. I don't actually mean that. But every training camp, I get addicted to a player, and I've already decided this year it's number 12, Montreal Washington. Let's talk about Damari Mathis, though. This was the Broncos' fourth-round pick out of Pitt. And I like the move because day three, I am all about taking the best player available, even if it's not an abundant need because Broncos weren't dying at corner, right? I mean, when you look at this depth chart here, for example, you already had Sertan, Ojemudia, and Darby coming back, plus you signed Kwan Williams. But so far, Damari Mathis has taken some advantage of injuries that have happened above him with Kwan Williams, who, by the way, did return to practice today, so that's good to see. But nevertheless, you've got Williams, who had a knee injury, Darby, who got banged up today. Mathis has taken full advantage of it. And Nathaniel Hackett, he recognizes that. Here's what he said about Mathis. He played a lot of press, so we kind of had to transition him to playing off coverage and learning those techniques. He's really picked up those, he, he's really picked up those very, really well. He made an awesome interception yesterday, cutting across the field. It wasn't just the technique, but that extra effort to continue to trust himself and run underneath the ball. That was great to see he's picking it up. Mathis is definitely going to be in a bit of a battle with Ojemudia for that third corner because you know CB1 is going to be Sertan, CB2's Darby, K1 Williams will be your nickel slot corner. But who is the third corner? Meaning... The third corner to your outside corners. I guess CB4 technically, but still. Who's going to be that next guy? Will it be Ojemudia coming back healthy this year? Or could it be Mathis? We're going to find out. But let's welcome Damari Mathis to Broncos country by spamming his jersey number 27 down below. I think one of the coolest things about Broncos country is the love they show the newcomers at Mile High. So let's give him a nice warm welcome to Denver by spamming his jersey number 27 down in the comment section.